Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Cognitive Productivity with Mac OS by Luke Bodwin. Before we do that, quick disclaimer, he gave me three copies of the book for free, although I'd actually seen it first, so I bought it on Kindle. But the Kindle copy sucks. Don't buy it. Like partway through, you're going to say, hey, there's a note about being updated, and it is updated, but only on his lean pub versions, which is the ones he gifted to me. So, disclaimer, he gave me the book. I'd already brought it on Kindle. Before we get into the book on how to be productive with Mac OS cognitively, because he's a cognitive scientist, I want to let you know there are two ways to support the channel. Number one is to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel. Number two is to go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare, where you can get my current course on TickTick and watch for the upcoming courses on time blocking things three. Buckle up. One of the ideas I really liked early in the book was that we are not consumers of information, that we are processors of information. And I guess there's a difference there. We're not just trying to ingest it, but we're trying to process it so that we can do something with it, produce something, solve a problem for other people. And that's an important distinction to make even in your language. I think language is so important. And changing it from I'm consuming stuff to I'm processing just makes you address your information differently. If you're consuming it, it's about kind of getting in and getting through it. If you're processing it, it's about which information, and we'll get to this later uh, in the book, which information is going to be most pertinent to the topics that I'm interested in right now. Another really good reminder um, from Luke was that we need to have templates for every, every kind of knowledge we're going to process, every kind of project we're going to do. Um, so I have that with my Zettelkasten where I have a different template for books and a different template for just general notes uh, or general, um, not even just general notes, but like a web article I'm going to look at. I have a different kind of template that I want to fill out for that versus when I'm going to process something longer. One of the things that my 2020 has been focused on, uh, not necessarily by choice at the beginning, but has ended up being focused on is how I process notes. You know, I talked about this when I talked about, catch the link up above, how to take a good Zettelcast and note. So Luke has four ways that he says you need to assess, assess materials um, as you come up to them. And let's read them off right here. So the first one is you're looking to decide if something is worth future processing at all or not. Second one is uh, to plan how much time you will need to process properly. Uh, the third is to understand the resource. Fourth is to practice uh, assessing resources so that you can do it in the future with less effort. So I'm actually going to do show you a little bit of how I do this on, I guess I showed it to you on Monday when I talked about how I process material with uh, Devin Think as I looked at my composer uh, article that I'm going to be writing. He also talks about in this book the value of a resource being variable and being variable depending on which project you're looking at. So say Tmux is a tool, a technical tool that I use. And while Tmux is a useful tool, to me, it's more research, more reading on it is only useful in so much as I need that information, right? If I don't need some small feature of Tmux, it doesn't matter. But when I'm looking at how do I split windows in Tmux, that's an important thing for me to, uh, to do, to remember, because I keep looking it up. And this is where, like, again, later on, we'll talk about practice where I could use, say, a flashcard system to ask me, how do you um, split windows in Tmux? And then I would have to answer that. And if I can't answer it, then the card stays in. When I can answer it consistently, then, you know, I reduce the frequency with which I can, uh, I would see this card again. So that's on to practice already. He says in the book, one of the things that knowledge workers really don't, really, really do poorly is they think that all of the learning, all of the reading, all of the whatever they consume is just simply going to magically show up in their lives as opposed to um, as opposed to practicing it so that they can really get a handle on the information so that it can be be used later. And so he recommends Anki here as a flashcard system, right? Students would use this. So he recommends as a flashcard system to use so that you can remember your information. I generally don't use that. I use um, Obsidian and its random note functionality. I'd love to tell you every night, but at least a couple times a week where I dive into Obsidian um, there and I hit, you know, four or five, six random notes and just kind of review the content 
sometimes linking it to other stuff if you know if it triggers other thoughts sometimes just reviewing it and remembering it or bringing it more to the surface um, and in that way then I'll get through some of my notes regularly and I think I have probably 700 notes so it'll take a while to get through all of them but again, just remembering reading uh, and, and understanding some of the stuff that I have is important so that I so that it keeps it to the front of mind. Now, one of the things that Luke does in this book is that he provides a bunch of videos linked off to YouTube. And while I think that many of the concepts he has really do get explained best here in video form, the quality of the videos is so low as to make them unwatchable. Uh, and a lot of them are 480p. I can't view them at all. Like they are so small or they are so blurry if I'm watching it on my you know, 27 inch 4K monitor, it's so blurry that I can't see what's happening. It's so blurry on my iPad, I can't see what's happening. And unfortunately that hinders the credibility of the videos. And I know Luke is a, like, he's a cognitive scientist based out of Vancouver, BC. His credibility is in his, you know, his the cognitive science, his education, his training. But when you look at the YouTube videos, they just are seem less reliable, less useful to you because they're so hard to watch. Um, now, there are a few that are 1080, great. But I think that the book would benefit a lot, the content would benefit a lot from upgrading his video quality to something more than 480 because it's terrible and you can't watch it. My final question, should you read Cognitive Productivity with Mac OS by Luke P. Bedwin? I think that's a really good book, hampered by some of the hundred dollar words used because he's a cognitive scientist that people are like, I don't, this doesn't even make sense to me. Um, and the videos outside of those things, I think there's a lot of really good stuff in here. He goes into uh, delving, which is, you know, he would call uh, deep reading. He goes into um, what would be called, what would be akin to syntopical reading from Mortimer Atler's How to Read a Book, which is excellent. You probably can't quite see it on my shelf here, but it's on my shelf there. Uh, I think that I think how to read a book and how to take smart notes are probably key books in for anyone that wants to get more out of the material they read and take good notes on it. Those are probably two key books that revolutionized how I read and then how I take notes. So I think it's hampered by a few things, but it it feels like it's really reaching into that category of something that is going to add specifically to how to take smart notes, like really adds and furthers your understanding of what a good note is and how to process information well. So if you're on Mac OS and that's interesting to you, I think it can be a good book, but totally buy the LeanPub versions. Do not buy the Kindle version because it just is totally missing content. And then the videos, I watch them, but I think that you're gonna find them hard to watch and that you're just gonna lose that content, which means that because it's not in the book, because he doesn't like literally walk you through a screenshot step-by-step, step, it's, it's just kind of lost content to you. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell, and YouTube actually probably will never let you know that a video came, but they're supposed to. If you want to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale, support the channel, or you can go to skill. Okay, I'm going to do it backwards again. CurtisMcHale.ca slash Skillshare. I have a current course on TickTick, -tick, upcoming course on time blocking, which I'm going to start recording probably tonight, and an upcoming course on Things 3, which I'm just finishing writing out. Have an excellent day.